Okay guys, so today we're going to be removing this tumor from the anterior maxilla. Je comprenais pas pourquoi ça m'atteignait moi. Je fume pas, je bois pas. Ça devrait pas être pour quelqu'un comme ça. Par après, j'ai appelé ma mère pour lui annoncer la mauvaise nouvelle. Elle était au travail, c'est jamais évident. J'ai demandé maman, peux-tu aller quelque part Et tu vas être toute seule, j'ai des mauvaises nouvelles à t'annoncer. Aujourd'hui, on va parler du carcinome épidermoïde de la cavité buccale. En fait, quand on parle de cancer buccal, souvent on fait référence au carcinome épidermoïde parce qu'il représente 90% de tous les cas de cancer de la cavité buccale. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour, bonjour. Comment allez-vous? Ça va super bien, vous? Ça va bien? Oui, ça va. J'aimerais que vous me racontiez un peu comment tout a commencé. Ça a commencé un petit peu de façon anodine. Moi, j'étais dans le camion, je mangeais. Et je me suis mordu la langue. Ça a fait mal sur le coup, mais je me suis dit, ça doit pas être si pire que ça. Euh, par hasard, j'avais un rendez-vous chez le dentiste quelques semaines plus tard. Elle a, elle a remarqué que j'avais quelque chose en dessous de la langue. Elle a dit, ah, tu t'es mordu. Euh, tu t'es pas manqué. C'est exactement ces mots. Tu t'es pas manqué. Elle dit, euh, si ça guérit pas, reviens me voir un mois plus tard ou on, se, on va se revoir. Donc, euh, on s'est revu, je sais, un mois plus tard. Euh, à ce moment-là, le vu que ça avait pas guéri, puis même moi, je lui ai mentionné que c'était douloureux à certains moments, quand j'avais des, quand je l'accrochais ou quand j'avais une suction dans la bouche, ça pouvait être, euh, donner un petit, petit choc. Donc à ce moment-là, on m'a donné une, une référence pour le docteur Klosman et c'est à partir de là que ça, ça a commencé euh, un petit peu plus sérieusement. It is very important for patients to remember that if they see a lesion that does not heal within two to three weeks, to consult a healthcare professional, especially a dentist, to make sure that this is not a pre-malignant or a malignant lesion. So it's important to remember that oral cancer is not painful, especially in its early stages. When the cancer becomes more advanced, patients can complain of pain, loss of sensation in the lip area, They can also complain of mobile teeth, difficulty swallowing, difficulty eating, and sometimes they present with ear aches, especially when the cancer is at the base of the tongue. In some patients, the first manifestation of oral cancer is a mass in the neck. And unfortunately, in these cases, the cancer has already metastasized to the neck nodes. After a complete oral examination, we often follow up with a panoramic x-ray that is immediately accessible. This radiological examination allows us to appreciate the maxillofacial structures as a whole. We are able to assess the temporomandibular joints, the maxillary sinuses, the bone levels of the jaw, the inferior alveolar nerve, and many other structures. So basically not just the teeth. When a dentist suspects a precancerous or cancerous lesion inside a patient's mouth, the next step will often be to obtain a biopsy. A biopsy is a diagnostic test in which a small sample of lesional tissue is obtained from microscopic examination. This is the ultimate test which will determine if the lesion is cancerous or not. During the microscopic examination of the biopsy, the pathologist will look for certain characteristics of cancer, such as cells that appear frankly atypical, that have an erratic growth pattern, or that are invading the adjacent structures. When a patient is referred to us with a confirmed diagnosis of oral cancer, we'll try to see them within seven to 10 days. At the initial appointment, we'll proceed with a clinical examination of the neck and the oral cavity to determine the extent of the lesion. We will also order a chest x-ray, a scan of the neck, and some lab tests. With this information, we'll be able to determine the stage of the disease. An early stage is associated with a better prognosis for the patient.
kemarin bro. In terms of side effects, you really have to break it down into two different things. Uh, the primary treatment of oral cancer is surgical therapy. And depending on where the cancer is in the mouth and what type of surgery occurs to remove that cancer, you can have different side effects that lead to what we call oral and masticatory dysfunction or an inability to use our mouth like we used to. This can include things such as not being able to chew properly, a loss of teeth and gums, the inability to speak like you once did, or the inability to swallow correctly, making maxillofacial reconstruction after cancer surgery to be extremely important and a way to restore form and function to patients that have oral cancer. Due to many of these side effects, it's exceedingly important that patients that have undergone treatment for oral cancer to have exquisite oral health and follow up with an oral health professional, either a general dentist or a specialist that treats patients particularly that have undergone radiation to the head and neck or have had surgery for oral cancer. Some of the problems that your healthcare professional or your oral healthcare professional can watch out for include things such as radiation-induced decay due to dryness of the mouth, uh, caring for areas of sensitivity in the mouth or changes in the mucosa, and exceedingly important things such as surveillance to make sure that there is no recurrence of any lesions within the oral cavity. L'opération, ça a bien été. Encore là, c'est la guérison. Hein? La guérison, et puis là, c'est un peu plus important, un peu plus invasif, je veux pas. Donc c'est un, un peu plus difficile et euh, la nourriture c'est pas évident à manger mais on, on vient à bout de passer au travers quand même. A diagnostic examination of the oral cavity at your recall visit at the dentist is simple, quick and painless. Whether you have teeth or not, it might just save your life. A late diagnosis of a cancerous lesion in the mouth will substantially lower the survival of affected patients. If you see or feel changes in your mouth, make sure you tell your dentist or physician immediately. As dentists, our training allows us to prevent and diagnose the multiple pathologies and oral lesions of various spectrums, from the small and simple aftus ulcer to oral cancer in its varying stages. To sum up, I can tell you that an oral examination by your dentist can help prevent a multitude of oral diseases, such as oral cancer. Your dentist is an oral health professional that has the training and the opportunity to detect oral cancer in its earliest stages. An annual visit at your dentist is of great importance, not just for routine, but for your overall oral health.